Hey everybody, it's Leah Grace. And John. And we are here today to make some soap inspired by pumpkin pie. So we have got our oils already melted down and the lye water already cooled. So we're going to combine these two and see the magic happen, shall we? Now John, have you ever had pumpkin pie? I've had it once, I think. And what were your thoughts? Um, it was good. Yeah. Not something to set your entire culture about, but I mean, it was good. <laughs> it's quite popular here in the U.S. I know I myself love a good pumpkin latte. You put pumpkin in everything. Pumpkin that is spam, true. Pumpkin spam, pumpkin air fresh. No, I'm not so sure about pumpkin spam. Hmm. Pumpkin candles, those are nice. So much pumpkin. It's a lot of pumpkin. <laughs> All right, now we've got our lye in here. I'm going to give it a little bit of hand mixing and then we'll blend it up. Alrighty, so we have divided our batter into our main section, which will be the actual pumpkin pie filling. Then we have a container here that's going to be for the crust, a sort of a lighter brown. And then just a small portion that's going to be white with titanium dioxide to pipe a little swirl of cream on top of each slice. So while I add these colorants, I wanted to ask you, dear, you say you haven't had pumpkin pie but only once. Is it not a thing back in Scotland? Not really. I mean, pumpkin isn't a thing. No? No. We have pumpkins like one week of the year. We carve scary faces in them, <laughs> put them outside, and then throw them away. So That's you don't do anything with the filling? Don't roast pumpkin seeds or... Why I guess not make pie. <laughs> You carve a face. Because they're tasty. Yeah, throw it out. That's it. <laughs> and then we're adding some brown to our crust. And I'm also going to add a little bit of titanium dioxide as well just to lighten it up. And now for one of my favorite parts mixing in the colors. Now these ones that have titanium dioxide added to them will need to be stick blended. That really helps disperse it and bring it to life. I'm hopeful that this color I've mixed for the pumpkin will look like a deep baked pumpkin color. Fingers crossed. It's hard to get that non-artificial orange. So I've actually mixed a few different pigments as well as an orange mica, and we will hope for the best. I splashed a little bit, <laughs> but it didn't get you. Where'd you go? That direction. Oh, that was uh, in this way then. <laughs> And we've got our three pound mold here lined with the silicone liner. We're gonna do all of our crusts, which is that brown, as the first layer all the way in the bottom. So we just made the executive decision to save a little bit of this crust color for some decoration along the top. Make it look like a pie crust, you know. Just a little bit I wanna save though, not much. Okay. That ought to be enough to decorate the top. Just kind of filling in all these empty spaces with the soap batter. So we've got our layer of brown along the bottom and this is going to lighten up as it oxidizes because it has titanium dioxide in it. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit where the soap has come along the edge of the liner just for a very neat look. So we are going to fragrance the pumpkin batter and we're going to use pumpkin souffle from Brambleberry. I have already measured out how much fragrance I want to use, so I'm going to go ahead and add this to the orange. Now this fragrance does discolor, it says to a brown, so I'm hoping that by adding our colorants, the pigments, micas, and titanium dioxide, it will sort of anchor that color change. 
part of the fun of soap making is it's all a little bit of an experiment. No one quite knows what will happen. We'll go ahead and mix this in. What we're setting up. Now there's a little known fact about my husband you should all probably be aware of. He is very good at little known facts. My love, do you know anything about pumpkin that you would like to share with us? Um, let me think. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll give you an American one, okay? Well, that is great. Yeah, I know, since we're here. Why not? Yes. <laughs> okay. In, kind of, I think, oh, I guess early colonial kind of times, mm -hmm. um, so like 1700s, pumpkin was actually used as the ingredient in the pie crust, not in the um, actual pie itself. Oh, dear. That's a good fact. Yeah. What would they put as the filling? Who knows, but they treated it like normal people. <laughs> like normal people? <laughs> So I'm breaking the fall of this pumpkin filling so I don't want it to push through the crust layer that we have already laid down. That's why it's always helpful to have a silicone spatula handy. And I'm just kind of evening it out as I go as well. You know this really does look like the color of pumpkin pie filling. So you've got all those delicious spices in there, pumpkin pie spice, like clove and nutmeg and cinnamon, all the good stuff. Just makes you think of Thanksgiving, doesn't it? Getting together with the family. My husband will have his very first American Thanksgiving this year. So excited. Are you? There's going to be so much food. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, that's one of the staples. <laughs> You're down for anything that comes with a feast, right dear? As long as there's food involved, I'm in. There you go. You heard the man. Not too bad of a bowl cleaning job, if I do say so myself. So now I'm just going to tidy up this mold to get ready for our next layer. Another random fact for you about pumpkins. Technically, a pumpkin is a fruit. Is it? Mm-hmm. From the same family as melons. So what you're saying is pumpkin pie is healthy. I guess, yeah. Great, I'll take it. You know, I'm not crazy into pumpkin pie. I, I like it, but I'd much rather have a blackberry pie. Or perhaps a chocolate one. Not chocolate pie. Pumpkin pie over chocolate pie. I'm going to give this mold a tap and then finish cleaning up the sides. This just helps the batter to even out nicely and also helps to eliminate any air bubbles that may have formed in the pouring process. So our goal is to have a nice smooth bar, not something you cut into and find a big hole. Although, honey, you did come up with a really good idea that would intentionally have holes in the soap the other day. You remember that? I thought we could make a cheese soap. <laughs> Why not? I don't think it would have to smell like cheese, mind you. I don't That's think what I was just thinking. Would like what would you fragrance cheese so? I thought it looked cool. Kind of Swiss cheese inspired. Kind of Mighty Mouse kind of vibe to it. <laughs> yeah. Next, work on the fragrance. We'll go from there. <laughs> See what I can come up with. Okay. Yeah, I was going through a list of thinking, what kind of foods could you make into soap? <laughs> and it's a worthy endeavor. Between dear. cake, cheese, muffins. <laughs> I think cake is super doable. You got the layers, do mm -hmm. a little jam, a little cream. Good to go. Okay, so I've got that brown. Oh my gosh, that is setting up. Let me swirl this a little bit. I was thinking we could do almost just like a little dollop along the edge here to look like crust of a pie. I think it'll work. But we're getting there. My dear, do you have any other pumpkin factoids? I, I guess so. 80% um, roughly, I think it's 80% of pumpkins anyway, made every year, are ready in October. Are Only 20% are ready for eating outside of October. I guess that's the main time everyone's having them. And November for Thanksgiving here. Mm -hmm. I plopped a little bit of crust where I don't want it right there, but I think I can fix that. There. No one will ever know. 
unless you watch this video. Let me try using the back of the spoon to kind of texturize. Yeah, not so much. Let's try the other side of the spoon. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, that's looking a little more crusty. I used this quarter teaspoon, actually, to add a little bit of pressed crust look. So I have prepped my ragtag piping mechanism. Super fancy, I know. It's a Ziploc. Christmas. Please note, it is a Christmas Ziploc. And I'm going to scoop in our white soap. And then this is going to be a little dollop of cream on every slice. I wonder if I could ask my lovely assistant to come and hold the container for me as I scoop it in. He can do that. He can! So I'm using my ruler here just so I'm aware of where the general one inch mark would be. I think I can do a little swirl within that area. Now let's ask my husband for a little bit of design advice. Darling, do you think the whipped cream dollop should be towards the end opposite the crust or more in the middle? Middle. All right, middle it is. When genius speaks, you gotta listen. Right, dear? Mm-hmm. Doesn't speak very often. <laughs> but. When it does. <laughs> Cute. I love that. This is smelling really delicious too. Getting excited for fall. We'll definitely have to do a pumpkin pie this year, my love. Oh, I like that. Yeah? That looks good. No more. No, that's, that's great. Good. That's great. Okay, well then that soap's done. So I'm pretty happy with how our pumpkin pie turned out today. It's good enough to eat. Oh, well, thank you. I like the little texture on the pie crust. The whipped cream dollops are adorable. And then hoping that that color is going to be anchored enough to at least hold on to some of that orange. We'll definitely check back in with you. But first, how about a close-up? Pretty anxious to see how this one's gonna look after 24 hours of curing. And then it'll be ready to go to a happy home in about four to six weeks. Dun da da da! Pie soap! I'm so excited about this. I think the color actually held pretty true. It kind of has a deep orange shade to it, which does look like baked pumpkin pie. So let's slice this beauty, shall we? So I'm just going to use my ruler to help me remember where the one inch mark is. Oh my goodness, this smells really good, but I wouldn't recommend eating it. It smells like you could. <laughs> you could try, but I would not recommend it. My grandma always told me to wash my mouth out with soap. I might enjoy it this way. Well, <laughs> I guess if you put it that way. And let's take a closer look at a slice here. Oh my gosh, I just love the whipped cream dollop. And actually the little ridge that happened right here at the front of the pie, it looks like pumpkin pie that you smooth out with your rubber spatula. And the little pie crust technique right here, pretty effective if I do say so. Let's get a closer look at the whole loaf. These little slices of pumpkin heaven will be ready to go to a loving home in about four to six weeks. In the meantime, our living room is going to smell amazing, right dear? Oh, already does. Thanks so much for soaping with us today. See you next time. And have a great day. Bye.